the state of Illinois budget is broke, how will you fix it? Well, um, so he, he, here's a few things that, that you need to do, okay? The, the first thing you need to understand is that what we have in state government, all the big ticket systems, they are structurally, financially unsustainable. You cannot make the math work. It is not about a new management team. It is not about tinkering on the margins. It is not about one-time spending cuts. Uh, that just gets you back to where we are this year, where we've been for four of the last seven years. These budget crises um, that are used by Democrats as a predicate for tax increases. Uh, in the short term, a, a, a few things. One is, we got $8.8 .8 billion in federal stimulus funds that are coming to this state. Okay, and Illinois is a donor state. In other words, we send more to DC than we get back in return. So this is our money. Uh, one of the things you do short term to leverage medium term system change is use that $8.8 .8 billion of our money for our priorities, not Washington DC's priorities for us. So we are off on all kinds of preposterous tangents and we can't do the core missions of state government. For example, we're spending, uh, two, we pledged $250 million for the Chicago Olympic bid. That was supposed to be privately financed, I recall. So if you said it was gonna be privately financed, then you privately finance it. If you don't think there's any chance it can lose money, as they like to say, then tell Pat Ryan to put Ann up as collateral, uh, not put taxpayers' money up as collateral. You made a promise, keep your promise. $400 million on high-speed rail, it, it, from Chicago to St. Louis, that is. The part, part of uh, uh, Barack Obama's Simpsons episode-like public policy, <laughs> where we're gonna have this Midwest uh, network of high-speed rail going from Chicago to St. Louis to Toledo. Because you know the real problem in Illinois? You know the real problem in this region? We can't get to Toledo fast enough. <laughs> $400 million on high-speed rail. It isn't even high-speed rail. It goes 30 miles an hour faster than Amtrak. We don't have the infrastructure for high-speed rail. So I'm gonna spend $400 million as a down payment on $9 billion to get to St. Louis 30 minutes faster? I don't think so. Uh, Bob was talking about our airport system. We're spending $110 million to buy up land in Piatone for a third airport that's never gonna come. That's not a wise uh, uh, prioritization of spending either. You have to talk about, you have to look at that money that we have and fill the budget gaps that we have short term to get about medium term system change when it comes to Medicaid, transportation infrastructure, K through 12 system, and our unfunded pension liability. Um, the other thing you need to do is make clear definitions of what government should be in the business of and what it should not be in the business of. And I am somebody who does not believe that government should be in the business of gambling. Um, they run enough numbers games without trying to do it professionally. <laughs> so um, what I have proposed doing is uh, selling the Illinois lottery, uh, privatizing the Illinois lottery, getting us out of the gambling business. Now I'm not opposed to legalized gambling, you could regulate it and tax it, but the state shouldn't be in the business. Depending on whose valuation you believe, that's an eight to $10 billion state asset. Now we'd have to do it right to make sure it's a reoccurring revenue stream, but that also helps you, number one, finance my wonderful tax cuts and spending caps, which of course there's a lag effect before you realize the economic impact of both of those policies, but that gives you that leverage that you need. So it's a combination of system change for these big ticket systems, it's a, using our money back for our priorities in the short term to leverage medium term system change and decide what government should be in the business of doing and what it should not. And the, the last thing I'll go, just to give you a sense of, of, of system change, because we haven't talked a lot about this, Medicaid. It's not about privatizing it so much, but the 1.7 million Medicaid patients in this state, you know what the big scam on them is? Our promise to provide low, uh, low uh, I'm sorry, quality health insurance to low income folks, is they don't get access to quality health care because we don't pay our bills, because we have a system that is financially unsustainable. We're gonna pay, we're gonna spend 25% more on Medicaid this year than we did just three years ago. In 10 years, if we do nothing to change the system, it will consume half the state's budget. You can't make the numbers work. Only 4% of state Medicaid patients are in managed care regimes, an HMO or a PPO, like you all are in to buy health insurance in the private marketplace. We need to move them into managed care, but that is a first step. The real long-term solution to Medicaid is a market-oriented solution. Florida embarked upon this program five years ago. You uh, get federal waivers for the dollars, the federal dollars you get to support your state Medicaid, your state Medicaid program, and you set up premium assistance programs that connect 
that uh, low-income Medicaid recipient to the provider that assists those folks to buy health insurance on the private marketplace just like everybody else does. And then you impose cost containment on the system long term because you give people dominion over their lives and you demand that they take dominion over their lives. That's one example of system change. I talked about K through 12 system change. I talked about the tax spend and borrow policies that facilitate system change with respect to the other big ticket systems. That is the direction we need to go. It is not a management problem in state government. It is a system problem.